So, everybody got ten fingers, right? Is, uh, get all the fireworks. Did you have any going off last night by your house? Yes. Yes. Now, they'll go off for another month. Don't get all tore up about that. It's all right. The dog will go nuts. It's all right. Okay. So, but as long as everybody's got their fingers, we're in good shape, ready to go. We're going to continue in the series. Uh, you know, this, this whole year we're uh, talking about engaging the seven, uh, seven purposes of the church and uh, that's in the foyer out there. And, and we're in the series uh, talking about learning uh, and, and, and understanding God's word. So we're going to continue in that. Uh, Pastor Grant did a wonderful job last week. Uh, talking about Adam and Eve in the fall and stuff. We're going to continue kind of in that, but we're going to focus more on, on this, uh, this individual that, that shows up and rears its ugly head. We're going to be talking about our foe, the deceiver, adversary, Satan, uh, and what we can do to combat uh, against the, the very lies and the, uh, the, uh, the, the things that Satan uh, allows us to, to think in our mind that is true, that, that is not. And we're going to ask you if you're willing and able uh, to stand for the honor of reading God's Word. We're going to be uh, reading in, in 1 Peter 5.8, 1 Peter 5.8, and we're going to dive right into this and, and uh, pray that God would, uh, would be right in the midst of, uh, of this service today. Our heart's desire is... In everything that we do, uh, every ministry that we have here, is that someone would hear the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and that they would have a personal relationship uh, with Jesus. So if you're lost this morning and need a relationship with God, uh, we did see one get saved first service, so praise the Lord for that. Uh, give God all the glory for that. So we're hoping that God will move in all of our lives to, to get us closer to do what, what he would have us to do. But real familiar scripture here, 1 Peter 5, 8, it says... Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, this opportunity that you bless us with once again, Lord. We uh, consider it an honor and a blessing to be able to come to your house together with uh, uh, these like-minded believers, Lord, that, that we trust that your Holy Spirit would be here and just uh, speak to our hearts this morning to direct us on what we as individuals need to do for you, Lord Father. We pray for those individuals that might be lost this morning, that needs to receive this wonderful gift of salvation, uh, praying for conviction, that they'd come to an altar of repentance, Lord, and, and receive this gift. We're so thankful for the miracles that you continue to perform, Lord Father, day in and day out. Watch over each family uh, that's here, the struggles that, that we have on a daily basis that we could trust in your word uh, and follow you. I understand the strict judgment of all my life of rightly dividing your word, and I accept that place this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So the, the adversary. So... Uh, for most believers, I, I would say for most believers that are believers in, in, in Jesus Christ, that, that are followers of him, that uh, have been uh, baptized and, 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 and uh, attend church maybe on a regular basis, I would say most of you all have probably read Genesis 1 and 2 and, and 3. For the most part, you've read about the creation uh, Adam and Eve, and that's just typical. You've, you've either heard it, you've read about it, you've learned about it at some point. Uh, and, in, and in any good thing in life, and, and, and what it would be is Genesis 1 and 2, man, it kind of gets you pumped up, doesn't it? You're just like, man, God spoke it, and it just happened. It was just like, man, it's just like God said, let there be light, and boom, there was light. You know, he said, let there be trees and water and and there it was it was a it was just like a motivational it's like a good motivation into this walk and in, in, in this faith that we have uh, through genesis 1 and 2 and then genesis 3 happens so this is the time, and it's, it's if you're watching a movie or if you're uh, sitting there, this is when the suspense, the music changes, the tone changes. You start taking a deep breath because you're thinking, don't go that way. You know, why are they running toward the danger? Run away from the danger. It's when the whole story begins to change. And unlike a movie, which is fake, this is real. This is real. This is where it all, this is where we're introduced uh, to the serpent, Satan, adversary, the foe, the deceiver, and where we're introduced to, and, and where he comes on the scene. 
So we're going to d- d- discuss this morning because it says that uh, in, in Genesis 3, 1 here, it, it talks about that. It says, now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. More crafty than any other beast of the field. The serpent, Satan, the devil, our adversary, the foe. Now, can, we can all agree, agree that, that, that there is many different beliefs in, in the, the world and in cultures and society today, correct? And, and, and I kind of look at it like this. I, I, I see, you know, personally myself, I, I, I believe uh, that there's a God in heaven, but I also believe that there is a devil in hell. I believe that. I believe that. And, and the reason I believe that is because of what the good book says, okay? Uh, I, and so there's a belief system that, that, that there is a heaven, there is a hell, there is a God, there is a devil, okay? And then there's another belief system where uh, this mentality of everything is just love. Everything is just love. So they believe that there is a God, but surely there is nothing bad that ever happens, there's nothing there, so there's no, you know, so because everything God, you know, if God created, then everything is supposed to happen that is good. So we have uh, the people that believe in God and, and, and hell and the devil, and we have people that believe that maybe, hey, there's just a God because he just wants everything and all of us uh, to be happy. And then there's a belief system where they don't believe in anything. They don't believe there's a God. They don't believe that there's a, 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 a devil. They don't believe there's a heaven or a hell. They just don't believe in anything. And, and this morning, do you fall in one of those categories? Do you fall in one of those belief systems uh, this morning? Because in the world today, if you, if you watch the news, it will tell you how you should believe. Okay? If you join groups and clubs, they will tell you how you should believe. Okay, so why do you believe the way that you believe? Is it because your great great grandmother? Is it because your mommy and your daddy? Or is it because that you've read the good book and tested it out for yourself? So why do you believe the way that, that you believe? So the, ser- uh, the serpent, Satan, has come up on the scene, our foe, our enemy uh, himself. And, and here's the thing so the devil is real, okay? He is real. Now, he's not this red little man that's got a pitchfork and a long tail with a little spike on the end of the tail. That's, that's not, a, you know, that's what the world and, and, and we, he, he, and ha, ha, that's in the movies. That's what Satan surely looks like, right? Well, I've never seen Satan personally, okay? So I can't say what Satan looks like. But that's where the people think, well, he's just this thing and we can just knock him off and we're good to go. No, the Bible tells us this, that, that Satan is the evil one the adversary, the father of lies. That's what the Bible teaches us that that Satan it is. And I am convinced in my heart of hearts, I am convinced in our world and society today that the greatest trick that the devil has ever pulled was to convince the world that he doesn't exist. I believe that that is the greatest trick to convince a culture, a society, a group of people, the majority of the world, that he doesn't exist. Because if he can do that, then he's got them where he wants them. Did, it, did I tell you he's, he's crafty? God said, he's, you know, in his word, he's crafty. He is a deceiver. He is Satan. He is a liar. And we need to be aware of his tricks and his cunningness to say, you will, hey, do this, you will feel good. We have to be aware of that. C.S. Lewis kind of quoted it like this. He wrote it down. He said, there is no neutral ground in the universe. Every square inch, every split second is claimed by God and counterclaimed by Satan. That's everything. Everything is God and everything is claimed by God. But I'm going to tell you, everything is counterclaimed by Satan. That is not true. Surely he didn't say that. Surely that's not what he meant. Surely you can go out there, do what you want to do, live the life that you want to live, and everything will be all right because surely that's not what he meant at all. Every time that, that, that we sin against God, it's because that we have believed a lie. 
you sin, you sin against God is because you believe that, that Satan has convinced you, ah, you'll get away with it. it, you'll feel, it it'll make you feel good. You'll get away with it. So you are believing a lie straight from the pits of hell. And you have to recognize that he is a deceiver. He is our foe. He is a liar trying to, uh, to devour every individual that he, that, he, that he can. If he can get you not to believe, then he's like, well, I've got this. But these believers, let's try to convince them that none of this is real, that all of this is fake, that everything that in God's word uh, is a lie. So how did the devil lie to Eve? Genesis 3, 1 says this. It says, he, the serpent, said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Did God really say that? When it, the amazing thing about this is, is so the first attack here in Genesis was completely directed at God's word. So recognize that Satan wasn't saying that, that there wasn't a God. You notice he didn't say there is no God. He directly attacked God's word. He directly went at, at God's word. Because, and, and think about this. Why didn't Satan, so why, he went at God's word. Why didn't Satan just say, hey, listen, hey, Eve, why didn't he take these approaches? Adam don't love you. Adam's sick of hearing about your feelings. You know, why, why didn't he take that kind of, or, or guess what? Adam liked it better before you got here. And here's a good one. And Adam just wants his rib back. Okay? Why didn't he approach it like that? No, he directly went at God's word is what he did. He directly attacked God's word because he could have went at her with jealousy, with selfishness, with anger. But no, he directly attacked God's word and said, and if I can get them to doubt this or question this, then I've got them in the snare that I need to get them. And boom, I can pull them the direction that I need to pull them. Because, because honestly, if she'd have said, well, Adam doesn't love you anymore, we know that she'd have went over there, Adam, do you love me? So she'd have tried to work that out. But he directly attacked the word of God. And that, that's kind of interesting in itself that, 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 that Satan here didn't deny that there was a God, but he questioned the very word of God. He questioned it, and he made Eve started doubting. By saying, surely that's not what God said. Surely that's not what God meant. You know, if God really loved you, you know, he wants the best for you. Now, you uh, go ahead and do the Eve, go ahead and do it. You're not going to hurt anyone by taking this. Guess what? It's, you're, it's not really bad. It's your life. It's your life. Have you ever, it, it, in today's time, have you ever noticed it's, it's all about me? It's all about my preferences and my wants and my desire. And the problem that we have uh, in our culture and in, even in some churches today is we are starting to doubt the very word of God. We're starting to doubt the very word of God because it, it, it's similar. Well, well, how's it go? Let me give you an example on, on how, we're, how that, that even you say. The culture, I could see the culture doing that because, you know, it's just human. It's a bunch of non-believers that are out there and they don't even believe anything. So I, I, can, I can give an argument saying, yeah, I, I could see how that could happen. But it's even happening in our churches today. How that people are not standing on the word of God, that they're being deceived by the, by the devil, that they're twisting the word. And here's, here's, a simple, uh, here's a simple, I'll just go back to the Ten Commandments, okay? Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not kill. There was 879,000 babies killed a year ago. How is that right? How, how, how is, if we're standing on the word of God and what God says and, it, and what's true in it, so, so what is it? God, does Satan himself has convinced people that killing a baby is okay? That murdering a baby is okay? That everything, so he has convinced him, he is like he had lied and, and got Eve to question and doubt the very word of God 
He did that to Eve also. Let me give you another example. Marriage. Marriage. From as far long as I can ever remember up until just a few years ago, it was a dude and a gal. Okay? Marriage itself. Well, well, why is this? Why is this? Because culturally, and even in some of our, uh, some of our churches... We are doubting the very Word of God. I really believe the Word of God. And you know why I believe the Word of God? Because I believe if he wanted two dudes to get married or two gals to get married, that he'd have wrote it down in his good book. I believe that with my whole heart. I don't believe he would have left something that important out of his book. I don't believe that at all. And I believe he'd have put it in there. So I stand on the biblical, uh, the biblical model of marriage in the way that God set it up. Not because mommy and daddy taught me that. Not because uh, some, some, uh, some group told me I had to believe that way. Because I read it for myself. I read it out of the very word of God. But, but surely, surely that's not what God meant, Right? Surely that's not what he meant. And that's what Satan will do. He will get you to doubt and question the very word of God. Why will he do that? Because he's crafty. He's sly. He's sneaky. He's a deceiver. He's our foe. He is a, the father of lies. He will lie to you and lie to you and lie to you. And, and here's what Eve done. And so in Genesis 3, 2, right after, after uh, Satan himself, the serpent, began, oh, surely, you know what, did, did he really mean that? Surely that's not what God said. Here's what she says. The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. Here's a problem, number one, Okay. The number one problem with this right here is that she even had a conversation with Satan and the devil. It is never going to work out good if you're ever trying to work a deal with Satan. Anytime that you decide to think, I'm going to sit down and have a conversation with a deceiver, a father of lies, the servant, the evil one, I'm going to sit down and have a conversation because surely he's got a perspective that we all really need to hear. Now, that's what the world would say and society would say. But, you know, the, the de- God created the, the serpent, so surely we need to get outside the box. We need to quit being so narrow-minded. Well, I just go by the Word of God, and I'm just going to stick with that. And that's all right because people's called me crazy, but, and it's all right. They may, may, may call me crazy, but at the end of the time, Brock, at the end of the time, here's what's going to happen. I'm going to die. And the good Lord's going to take me back to heaven. Okay? And if I die and none of this is true, what have I really lost? What have I, what have I really lost if none of this is true? But if this is true, and for those that don't believe every word of this, and don't try to honor every word of this, Who's the biggest loser when they die? Is it me or is it them? I think that I've got, the bear, I've got a win-win situation here, okay? I've got a win-win. And why do I believe this? Because I believe it because when the Holy Spirit passes by, this book tells me more about myself than I know about myself. It, it leads me through the deepest, darkest valleys, the troubles and the struggles that we have in life. It shows me and guides me and directs me. It is a lamp before my feet. The very Word of God leads us and guides us and directs us. And if we ignore what the Word of God says, we are going to fall prey to what the old devil, the enemy, the serpent, Satan himself says. Because listen, here's what Eve did. We'll take you back. Let me read this from Genesis 2.16 real quick. Here's what what God said in Genesis 2.16. And here's why Eve got herself in trouble. Genesis 2.16, it says, The Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may eat, here's the word, freely. Freely. One thing that I really love about God is I'm not his robot. He doesn't make robots. But he gives us a a choice 
on whether or not we want to believe in him and we want to follow him and we want to do what he says. He gives us that. And, and that's what he did here for Adam and Eve. He gave them a choice on, do you, you, can, you can follow me, you can listen to me because surely it was good in the garden, right? Surely it was good in the garden. It, it'd be kind of like this. So here's, here's the scenario for Eve that was set up. And here's us today. You're brought in and we have this big gathering as a group of individuals. And you, you, you sit at the dessert table, okay? And you're, think of your favorite, favorite dessert, okay? And we tell you, you can have of all these right here, but you see that one over there in the corner? You can't have that one. You can't have that one. And the very nature within us would be going, why? I want that one. That's what I love. It's about me. It's about, instead of honoring what God said, I have provided for you. I have given you everything if you need here in the garden. But this one tree over here, do not touch. Do not take of it. Do not eat of it. But we, in our, our human nature, he was giving her a choice on what are you going to decide? Are you going to follow me? Or are you going to listen to the lies straight from the devil and the serpent himself? So she left out. So when she communicated with the, with the serpent here, you notice here, I'll read it to you again. It says, the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden. She left out the word freely. And when you leave out the word freely here, she's implying that maybe God is holding something back. He's holding something. We can do that, but I wonder what he's holding back over there. He, why did he tell us not to, to do that? First of all, she got herself in trouble because she started talking with the serpent. She got herself in trouble. And that's what typically happens in our life is we begin to talk and sit down and have a conversation with the very enemy that wants us to die, that doesn't like us. Do you realize because you are made in the image of God, Satan hates you? Because you are made in the image of God, Satan wants nothing to do with you. He wants the very opposite of the good things that God wants for your life. He doesn't want anything good to happen in your life whatsoever so problem number two once you engage in a conversation with the enemy it will cause us as individuals to doubt first of all she should have never enter entertained the idea second of all she should never have had a conversation with the serpent the devil the adversary our foe the enemy that is dangerous. And in your life, you as individuals, maybe it's something's going on in your life personally where you're thinking, well, it's all right. Well, let me, let me, let me go do this because nobody really knows that I'm doing that. Do you know on, your, uh, on any electronic device that you have, they can look up everything that you've ever searched, that you've ever looked at, that you have ever was curious about? Don't you realize that they, that, that they can do that? They know everything, and, and, and guess what? That doesn't scare me as much as knowing that God knows everything that we've laid our eyes on, that we've looked at, that we've entertained. We've, that, that concerns me more than anything is that God knows that we've done that as individuals, and we have to beware because Satan is trying to creep into the body of believers of Christ and are trying to get us and convince us that everything is okay. It's all right. Go in and just pray about it. Just pray about it. It'll be all right. God will forgive you. Just pray about it. But she left out the word freely. In Genesis 3, 4, and 5, it says, The serpent said to the woman, You surely will not die. For God knows that in the day uh, you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When we start to question and doubt the goodness of God, we are in danger of disobeying God. When we start, uh, when we start questioning and doubting, is that, is that what God really meant for marriage? Because surely a baby that's got a heartbeat at a very, very, very young time in the mother's womb, surely that's not a hu human being, right? Surely that's not what God was saying. It's all right because, because it's all right if an individual makes that choice for themselves. 
I'll never be convinced that murder or killing of anything is all right. Never be convinced of that. Especially a harmless little baby. I'll never be convinced of that. And we live in a sick, deranged, sick society where they think that that is completely fine. That is completely fine. And that is dangerous grounds for each and every one of us. It's dangerous grounds for this world. It's dangerous grounds for the church. And it's dangerous ground as us as believers in Christ. Because they'll think that, well, you, you're, you're, just, you're just one of those Christians. You're just one of those Bible thumpers. You're just one of those that believes what the Word of God said. Don't you? Here's a good one we get. Don't you know that man wrote the Bible? That's a good one. Don't you know that man wrote the Bible? Now, I believe God inspired it straight from heaven right down to be put down for us for a road map, for a tool for us to use to be able uh, to, to, to make it through this life. Have you ever had a hard time and all of a sudden you just open your Bible and it's like, wow, that's the verse that I needed to read? Has your daily devotion that's ever popped up on your phone and it been, wow, I needed to hear that? Brothers and sisters, that ain't by accident. That comes straight from heaven, straight from God, trying to teach us that, man, I am in, your, in the presence there. I am there to protect you and to help you. But uh, for the foe, the deceiver, here's what he'll say. Hey, go ahead, smoke it. It'll be all right. Hey, go ahead. Won't you just pop that? Pop that pill. It'll be all right. Just that couple of them won't hurt you, won't you? Hey, won't you watch that? It'll be all right. It'll be all right, won't you? Hey, hey you, you know what? You deserve it. Won't you go touch that? Everything will be fine. All that will be all right. There wasn't nothing ever coming because surely God will understand that. And here's a good one. Besides, nobody has the right to judge you. Nobody has the right to judge you. So go out there, smoke it, pop it, watch it, touch it all you want because nobody has the right to judge you at all. Because surely... That's not what God is saying. Surely that's not what he's saying. It says, and the serpent said to the woman, you surely will not die. You surely will not die. Satan has convinced many it's better to do the way that you want to do. Our culture is, is, is wrapped up in this whole mindset of, as, hey, guess what? Do it your way. Live together for a while because guess what? Isn't it better that if it doesn't work out, you don't have to go through a divorce? Isn't that the best way to do it? Just let just shack up. Play family. Because surely you will not die. Surely it's all right to click on that website or to watch that movie because surely you will not die. Guess what? Go ahead, drink you a fifth, be an alcoholic, because surely you will not die. Surely you won't die. Okay, go ahead, be addicted to pornography, because surely you will not die. Do drugs, surely you will not die. Be greedy, because surely you will not die. Lust after someone else, because surely you will not die. Go ahead, do all these things. Envy because surely you will not die. Be bitter and angry because surely you will not die. But all of us realize, listen, so that's a, that's a crazy statement. Surely you will not die. Are all of us going to die one day? So why is that? Surely you will not die. Well, I know I'm going to die one of these days. So what Satan is saying is, a, is, is straight from the pits of hell. He is a liar. He is a, a deceiver. He wants you to believe something that is not true. He is crafty. Don't entertain the idea of, hey, I'll sit and have a conversation with him. Don't ever inter introduce that ad. Because sometimes when he's coming at me, I, all I can say sometimes, I'll walk through it, I'll be in my car. Get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me. You don't deserve any place. You don't deserve any recognition at all. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm personally, spiritually just, just concerned for our culture in general. I'm, I'm, I'm concerned for our churches in general, I'm, I'm deeply concerned about that because of what's saying. I, I, I'm concerned about families. 
And I'll tell you one big thing. I'm concerned about marriages. I am because, because the simple fact that, 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 that you know what? Well, we, you know, the, the marriage thing is, it, it, it's like every week there is somebody contacting us. The man, our marriage just ain't going good. <laughs> There's something wrong. And Satan has either creeped in through some pornography or some adultery or, or some lusting, and he has creeped in and has completely convinced and li- lied to one of the parties that, hey, go out there and do this because surely you won't die. Surely God wants us to live the life like that TV show, Sister Wife. Surely you won't die. Surely he wants us to have multiple people and partners. Surely you won't die. And I've seen an attack on families, on marriages, on finances. And I'm going to tell you, here's one that ought to hit every one of our hearts. I've seen the attacks on our children, our youth, and our church. I have witnessed it personally. I have seen it with my own eyes. I have watched it because Satan has come in and said, Hey, surely it's not a big deal. Surely that's not what God, surely that's not what he was saying here. And he tries to begin to get us to twist and to turn God's word because he is a deceiver. He is a a liar. He is an adversary. He is our foe. He is Satan, the devil, straight out of the pits of hell. He is a liar. Have you ever got to that notion and thought, hmm, that's probably not a good idea. And if that ever comes to you, don't do it. Maybe that's not a good decision or a why. Don't do it. Step away from it. Because once you begin to entertain the idea, you'll find yourself on a roller coaster headed for disaster. And Satan will sit back and say, surely you'll not die. Surely you'll not die. But guess what? I got good news for you. Yeah, he's under attack. He's probably attacked your marriage. He's probably attacked your family. He's probably attacked your co-workers. He's probably attacked you personally. But I got good news for you. The Bible tells me something that's very, very valuable. It tells me something. It tells me that we have a helmet. It tells that we we have a breastplate. It tells me that, that, that we have this armor, this belt that we are to put on. It tells me all of this thing, but it also tells me, and those are are defensive things that kind of keep the fiery darts from coming, but it tells me something else, and this is the good news that you need to hear about this morning. It tells me something about a sword. It tells me something in his word. It says in Ephesians 6, 17, it says the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. How do we combat against our foe, the adversary, Satan, the devil? How do we combat against him, the word of God? It'll not be the tricks. It'll not be things. Well, you'll come up with some one, two, three uh, process that we'll, uh, we'll beat him by, but it'll have to be directed from the Word of God. The best example I can give you, Jesus Christ, 40 days in the wilderness. What did he come back? He was tempted. What did he use? The Word of God to combat against Satan. Satan will twist it. He will try to tell. But I'll tell you what, the best weapon that we have is this Word of God. And let me tell you something about the Bible. The Bible just in the in the book that somebody decided to write that had a lot of little fairy tales and good stories in it and good moral stories. It's not just that. Because I believe, I believe that there was, there was a dude that took his family and stayed on a boat. And God rescued them. Dude, if any guy can take his family on a boat that long and survive, God had to be in it. God had to be in it. I I truly believe that Noah built an ark. And you know what? I, I truly believe also, I believe also that there was a dude that got swallowed by a big fish. I believe that. I don't believe that that's some fairy tale that was just, you know, mom and dad told me that I need to uh, probably try to listen and believe this, but I truly believe that Jonah was swallowed by a fish. I believe that. And I also believe that there were three guys that were cast in a fiery furnace 
And when they looked down, they seen the image. There was a fourth one standing there, and it looked like the Son of God walking directly beside it. How many of you all have ever been through a fire where Jesus has walked right beside you to get you out? How many of you all have ever battled in your marriage, at your workplace, spiritually with, with Satan? How many of you all ever battled, and Jesus has been right there with you every step of the way? Every step of the way. The greatest spiritual weapon that wielded against the devil in this spiritual battle that we are in. And it's not just as easy as saying, beep, devil, get off my shoulder. That's what the movies want to tell you. It's not that just that easy. But when he comes at you, you better know the word of God. You better understand the Word of God. You better, you better have learned and understand what it means about the spiritual battle that you and I are going to face day in and day out. Because I, guess what? I love all the accounts of the Bible. I love it. And, man, it makes you feel good. I love it. It's like, it's like the, the, the winner always comes out on top. And that's a good feeling. Yeah, how, how God always comes out on top or for some reason. This, this, this God in heaven always allows us to become victorious. The hard trials and the troubles that we face. It, you're here today. For some reason that tells me that God has allowed you to be victorious. We've all had troubles in our marriages. But I want to tell you, when you got married, you shouldn't have just said, said, hey, it's just two of us in this. But I hope and pray that you added this secret ingredients, and it's God being there in your marriage also. Because the first something in nowadays in a culture that's worth fighting for, it's worth fighting for keeping parents together. For keeping mom and dads together. Why is our, our youth and our children so, so, uh, so messed up in their mind? It's because they don't have a stable house home where they see mommy and daddy working through things, praying together, and they don't have their parents sitting there saying, guess what? Let's get into this word. Let's do devotions together. They don't have that, so that's why they're so twisted and destroyed nowadays. Combating the Satan with the Word of God. Let me read it. Here's this. So when, how, how many, have any of y'all ever been discouraged? Yes. So let me give you some examples here. So when you're discouraged, remember the Word of God because the Word of God says this. Why am I so downcast, oh my soul? I put my hope in God. Let's fight against this discouragement with the Word of God. Here's something else the Word of God says. Uh, when your family is under attack, remember the Word. It says, no weapon formed against me uh, will, you, will prosper. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So if your family's under attack, there's words to help you protect this, and it's called the Word of God. Listen to this. When you don't think that you can make it another day. And I'd say the majority of us have has somewhat been there before. I just can't make it another day. Remember what the Word says. Don't grow weary in doing good. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. When you have a bad diagnosis, guess what? That's not the end. Remember what the Word says. The Word says, believe with all your heart. All things are possible with God. By His stripes, we are healed. We have seen that evidence in our church. I know of two accounts of people in our own church donating parts of their own body to save someone else. And Eric Holly was sitting in service with us during first service. So I know God can do amazing things when it doesn't look good. And, and when you're just not sure, remember the Word of God. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. When your relationships, your marriages are in trouble, when those relationships are in trouble, remember the Word. Let me just quote it. It's like, remember the Word. Love is patient. Love is patient. Wives, be patient with your husbands. Husbands, be patient with your wives. Parents, be patient with your kids. 
Be patient with God because love is patient. And here this morning, if you're lost, if you're damaged, if you're discouraged, I can't quote any other scripture that I know could ever lift you up than the scripture that I'm about to quote you. And it's a scripture that everybody, even the people that don't even believe in God, I'll guarantee can quote this scripture. But if you're here this morning, you're saying, man, I really don't have a relationship. Or man, my marriage is in, is in trouble. Or man, I am just discouraged. Or man, so-and-so at church really done me wrong. Man, there's no greater scripture and no greater love than John 3, 16. And every time that I get discouraged, I just remember how much Jesus loved me and how much the Father in heaven loved me. Because I'm going to tell you, I ain't giving my babies up for nobody. But God was willing to give up his son for you for this very moment right here in Living Water Church this morning. He was willing to give up his son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish. You have a choice this morning. You can live in discourage. You can live in anger. You can live in bitterness. You can live in greed. You can live in lust. And Satan will tell you, hey, surely you won't die. Or you can live by the word of God, the sword, the infallible word of God, that there's everything from Genesis to Revelation. I believe it from cover to cover. And the only thing is going to help us in the end is us knowing and understanding the Word of God. Now, I love my parents and I love my grandparents. But they, they weren't the ones that could make the biggest decision that I ever had to make in my life. And that was, do I believe what this book tells me? And this morning, I want to ask you a simple question. Have you ever made a profession of faith, a relationship with Jesus Christ, where you can say, man, I believe what that word says. Because God loved you enough that he gave his only son. That if you'll believe and trust and respond to him, that you will not perish, but you have, will have eternal life. And that is something that the devil don't like to hear. So don't let the devil convince you of all the lies and the craftiness that he may be telling you and whispering in your ear this morning. But if you need to be saved, if your marriage is struggling, if you're discouraged, if your person in walk with Christ is not where you feel like it needs to be, then God's going to give you an invitation. And you're going to respond the way God wants you to respond. If you need a relationship with Him, come to us. We'll talk about it. We'll pray about it. God will save you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word.